special Eli Collins uh, segment. Eli, he was swinging by the Cube. I know you're super busy. Eli Collins is a senior engineer at Cloudera, a friend of SiliconANGLE. We see him in the office uh, where we are at Cloudera, and we've talked in the past on the Cube. We've had some great chats. Um, I know you're super busy. You're hosting a session at two o'clock. We got a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about uh, uh, big. Big Top. Big Top. I saw some hashtags popping yeah. around. Doug Cutting was, uh, was mentioned in that. So what is Big Top? Share with the folks what Big Top is. Yeah, Big Top is a new Apache project that's focused on the Hadoop stack as a whole. Um, so the testing integration of all the components and then releasing them as one um, unified platform. Um, so that's something new to the community. Um, typically, a lot of the integration has not happened um, at Apache, and so we've uh, open sourced a lot of the kind of integration and testing and build infrastructure, brought it to Apache, uh, gotten a bunch of people in the ecosystem, you know, Hortonworks, Canonical, IBM, Yahoo involved, uh, and we're collaborating on basically bringing the Hadoop stack um, together as an Apache project. So when was this announced? Because I've never heard of Big Top. Yeah, it's you know it's still in the incubator at Apache, okay. so it's still uh, we're still putting through the development. It's been in progress for at least like two or three months, but we haven't had kind of a big 1.0 release yet. Um, so we've had a couple minor releases, but we're still working towards that. that so it's big coming release. out. There's interest, and you guys are making exactly. progress. So what is it again, and what's the purpose of it again? So the purpose is it's devoted to it's an Apache project that's devoted to the Hadoop stack as a whole. So it's primarily focused on the testing and integration of the stack. So as, as the Hadoop stack grows and gets more complicated, and more and more use cases um, involve multiple components in the stack, you know, workflow, scheduling, storage, compute, um, there needs to be a home that exercises you know, how these components in the stack uh, interoperate uh, and function yeah. so that we can start thinking of it more as an integrated platform and less as a kind of the sum of the parts. That's great. So Big Top is a new Apache project. Eli Collins, you're involved personally? Yes. In yeah. that project? And I who am. else is involved from Cloudera? Um, oh, there's a number. We've got five people uh, involved in it. So Roman Shaposnak, Andrew Beyer, uh, Bruno Mahe, Peter Linnell. Um, number of really strong yeah. people on it. So how are you feeling right now? $40 million in financing for oh, the company? Good. Great yeah, validation. Yeah. Um, pretty exciting times. I remember the you know the first Hadoop World three years ago. Uh, you know, quite a bit has changed. It's pretty exciting to see the, the rocket ship is finally yeah. uh, entering the atmosphere. I remember last year, you know, um, I used the word big data revolution. This is Cloud Air as the home of the big data, you know, uh, earthquake, you know, revolution. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and, you know, I remember back then, you know, the word big data was kind of like, yeah, we don't want to use it. But now it's now a full industry. Yeah. It actually is happening. Yeah. You know, so your you grandma guys, might know yeah. the word big data. <laughs> <laughs> and Hadoop is happening. So congratulations. Um, uh, Ed, Ed Albanese was on earlier, and mm. he clarified for the, the audience and got on the record that Cloudera is completely 100% open. Mm -hmm. Everything contributes to open source except for the, the enterprise suite, which is yeah. unique to Cloudera. Mm -hmm. So he clarified that whole misconception of anyone's kind of tossing around grenades at Cloudera that you guys are 100% committed yes. to Apache. Yeah, CDH. Apache Core. CDH is a free, it's Apache. Yeah, CDH is 100% Apache licensed open source software, and, Apa and future versions of CDH will actually be based on Apache Big Top. So, um, you heard it here, Cloudera is banging the drum, CDH is open source, it's free, they only charge for that added value product that's unique to you guys, which is mm -hmm. the Enterprise Edition. Exactly. Pretty simple. Yep. I mean, it's not complicated. You not got free Apache, CDH, mm -hmm. and Cloudera is unique differentiator. Exactly. And that's continued to do that. So congratulations, we've got Thank great you. reviews. We just had a guest on, uh, had a great review of the Enterprise Edition, the new UI, so it's fantastic. It's exciting, that product's yeah. really taken off. It's well, congratulations, out. Eli. Thank you. Cube alumni, we've had multiple cues with Eli. Thanks for coming on uh, the Cube. Appreciate Thank you. it.
for the for the user. Did you ever use Excel before? Yeah. You can use all products. Really, it's that intuitive. Yeah, it's a spreadsheet. Stefan, uh, uh, sorry, I jumped in late there. I had to take a bio break. Um, uh, nice to meet you. Welcome to the Cube, um, Mike. We heard from other folks in the Cube. Pay attention to integration. So mm -hmm. the practitioners were talking oh. about the integration. Obviously, data sets are you know sometimes siloed and mm -hmm. it's a challenge. And what's the advice you have for folks out there who want to start using the BI stuff and using social data? It's you know, diverse yeah. data types and want to develop on that. Uh, how do you guys approach that, and how, how do you talk about that data integration component? So, um, given our experience, we're really focusing on data integration and in IT ecosystem integration in general, right? If your product is not monitoring, uh, you can't monitor the product with a Nagios or with a HP Tivoli, uh, you don't even need to go to a big organization. If you don't integrate with LDAP and don't understand what LDAP or Active Directory is, don't even talk to those guys, right? We have a lot of customers that even have mainframe data and all those kind of things, and, and we're really good about this. Because the reality is you usually come into an IT ecosystem that's grown uh, best of breed uh, for many, many years, um, grown over 50 years, and you really need to interact with those systems. So again, we, we have REST APIs, you can monitor, we integrate with security solutions, pluggable. We, we can talk to mainframe uh, machines, in fact, because for example, in the financial industry, that's very important, um, and so on and so on. And I think the beauty, and that's, that's the way we think about Hadoop, the beauty of Hadoop is it eliminates limitation in storage and compute. Since 30 years, we do ETL, massage data into star schemas because we had this limited amount of hardware. We created indexes and perfect star schemas that, by the way, every year change because there's no perfect star schema. To really optimize data so we can reasonably interact with it. We couldn't, because we couldn't only scale up, there's only so much HP or SGI or ABM hardware you could buy for money. With Hadoop, it's not about big data. You know, if you ask me, by the way, big data is a big buzzword from big companies to make big money. Yeah. You know. Um, it's like Web 2.0, it's a good buzzword. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 So, yeah. Uh -huh. so it sells well. what is beautiful about Hadoop <laughs> is the, lim it, 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 the limitation of storage and compute disappear. We don't need to do extract, transform, load up front. We can do that later. We can pull all data, any size, structured, unstructured, um, you know, even yeah. image data into Hadoop and we can go from the raw data. It's not environment friendly, we should think about this, but it provides agility, it provides us the, you know, yeah. the ability to make mistakes, to go back, and really, if we just have the tools to empower business users, we can get so much more insights. Avi Mehta was talking about um, his startup, uh, Traseda, which is in the financial services area. It's really you know, a more focused vertical for him, but in general, what he's saying is essentially we're doing, we're solving problems we never could solve before. So exactly. you know, the word that I love these days is schemaless, right? So um, it's enabling a, lot, a whole new set of opportunities. As you said, it's a whole new world for us to get that data. Question specifically is, because you have visibility into kind of the old way and new way, what is the disruptive uh, forces around the old guys? So there are guys making some big money, yeah. rolling in the old data warehouse, mm -hmm. the old business intelligence. How are they being disrupted right yeah. now? And can you share your observations, any anecdotes around that? Yeah. Uh, what Certainly. are those disruptions? And, and, and you know, obviously you got free Hadoop, it's free. Mm -hmm. You have services that people can build on top of and new products. So, and the old models, again, they charge a lot. Yeah but might not be relevant. How are they being disrupted? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me maybe get a little bit more, more technical to answer this question. So um, RDBMS databases are really optimized for random read and writes, right? They are transactional systems. And they're really made for writing a record, updating a record, deleting a record, or reading that one record. They really wasn't, RDBMS wasn't built for data warehousing. Though, in the last 20 years, we misused RDBMSs with all the heavy lifting around B3 data structures, asset transactions for data warehousing. And if you really look at the way how data is stored in databases, it's, it's a waste. You know, you blow up data to create indexes, you actually don't need for data warehousing. Because if you look at the profiles of data warehousing, you usually, usually do joins, full table scans, those kind of stuff you do sequential access to the data, where Hadoop is very, very strong. And what is very interesting, I mean, Hadoop didn't break or change the laws of physics. What the difference of Hadoop is that it accesses data sequentially. And what happened, and Doc Cutting talked about this, what happened about the last you know, 15 years is that 
the reading head in a hard drive couldn't move faster. It still takes eight milliseconds to move that reading head, but the disk is now spinning much faster, so we can sequentially read much more data, but not randomly read faster data. And this is really where Hadoop comes from, and to talk where it's disruptive, um, in the whole data warehousing space, where we really need sequential access, I think the amount of business that the tr traditional RDB mess vendors do will change into more kind of a Hadoop environment. And, and we see that. I mean, every big software company is having a Hadoop offer right now looking into this. Yeah, and you got, obviously, in the storage side, it's a great point about the, the disk. I mean, it's physical, you know, head. Now you got SSDs out there with flash, even accelerates that piece. It makes it a little bit faster, but you know, it's not necessarily it's, gonna... It's, it's, that's a very good question. You're, you're, let's, you're let's arguing, get in. You're I'm arguing essentially okay. the, track, the track capacity okay. is the limiting factor there. And so, so, okay, and let's, let's, let's talk random, about this. So you're the technical guy. Let's go, yeah, the wheel is spun, now we got it going. So I'm a German good. engineer, let me... <laughs> <laughs> Fast so cars and spinning disks. You know, in, no. in fact, with SSDs and even with memory, sequential access is thousands of times faster, even in SSDs and in memory than random access. So the idea of a dupe will not disappear with SSDs. Even though SSDs get cheaper, it's great. Everything gets faster. Um, and certainly there's a boost for random read and writes. But the overall uh, performance difference of sequential versus random access is tremendous. That's great. We had Facebook on Jonathan Gray yesterday mm -hmm. talking Good about mine, you yeah. know how you know people they store email and you know people don't read it. It's hanging around. It's passive data, and then yeah. they're focusing more on active data and passive data. Does that dynamic change the equation? Can you elaborate on that notion of active data, passive data, tiering? It's kind of a storage concept, but yeah. it's, it plays mm -hmm. into Hadoop and, and the benefits there. So um, let me share a little story. Um, about active and passive data. So if you go to your bank um, maybe three months and look three months ahead on your credit card transaction bill and you say, hey, this is $500, not for me. That's fraud. They look at this, $500 three months ago. You're right, that's fraud because it's passive data. The reality is it's on tape. It's somewhere in the basement. They need to find one guy that goes down into the basement, find that tape, puts it back into the rack, reads all the records, it's not worth $500. That's the reality today. The reality today also is that we have very big retailers that only can store and analyze the last three months of data. We at Datomia call that enterprise amnesia. <laughs> they can't really compare yeah. last Christmas with this Christmas. And, you know, so, so and one of do, And if they do, they have to build an expensive Incredibly expensive. expensive. eBay said four, 14 days they keep data, and they said yeah. they expand that with the Cassini to 90 days. Yeah, that's now, great. That's great. still, it's still maybe way yeah. less than we need wow, as consumers. Right? Right, wow. well, remember, yeah. you will, uh, imagine you would only remember the last 90 days, <laughs> right? Um, anyway. And this is how you run companies. That's, could be could be good for business S and relationships. Certainly, <laughs> I mean, um, <laughs> this is how we run companies. We're really just looking to a keyhole, right? So now we have a customer that stores 250 trillion records on a Hadoop cluster and is building out this Hadoop environment. And they're looking at um, transactions over the last 10 years. They're getting insights in customer behavior, in fraud, and in how their business is growing and potentially can be extended they could never see before. And they brought their storage cost down from $27,000 per terabyte to $300 per terabyte. If you build a Hadoop environment like this, I'm sure you know your hardware vendor gives you a good deal on a terabyte. But um, all this data now is quote unquote active, right? You can analyze it, and with our product, a spreadsheet, there are hundreds and hundreds of users in this organization that is now looking to this data and getting insights. The value proposition is very compelling. Uh, Stefan, thank you for coming on theCUBE. Uh, we got a break right now, and, but I'm sorry for the just scheduling. I, I just one, one, one quick uh, thing. I know you guys got a little bit involved in the uh, who, who, who contributed more code debate. You know, yes. We wrote about that, but uh, and you, you, you know, Datamir sent out a tweet. Uh, 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 who's, whose Hadoop is bigger? Right? Yeah. Uh, I had so to ask you about that. So you got into the uh, <laughs> conversational <laughs> nest, huh? So um, yeah. we at Datamir try to have a good time. We, we do great, we do a great software, but we also you know try to see everything with a little with a little smile there. So I, I did a blog post um, in that context because there's a few companies trying to have a conversation who contributed more and you know the blog post starts around like actually Datamir contributed more. What of course uh, <laughs> was a joke. Um, and we and we made a t-shirt and you can actually go to our website and get a t-shirt. Um, 
that says my Hadoop is bigger than yours. So if your Hadoop cluster or your code contribution is bigger, um, please come on our that website was and get a shot. Past year, which I, is our I have one for you too, of course. Yeah, if right, your Hadoop awesome. is bigger than yeah, someone else, I definitely want that T-shirt. Yeah, we we uh, we Thank love you. to play jokes on on the cube and Silicon Angle with Bond. And, and last year we covered Hadoop. We're the only one doing it now. Everyone's covering, but you know. The joke so was we we're going to come out with our own distribution of Hadoop, <laughs> and that we, we kind of announce it every year. So, so your elephant we, is faster yeah, yeah, than so everybody yeah. else's. Well, I figure EMC has one. Yeah, I mean, why not? Yeah. Silicon Angle is going to launch, launch our own distribution for Hadoop. <laughs> come, come see it, SiliconAngle.com, and download it. So you can find the link. That's great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much for having me. Appreciate Stefan, it. Great Thanks. to meet you. Sorry Thank for the you. scheduling uh, snafu. No great to have you.